Good evening, everyone. Hello. Can you hear me clearly? Am I audible? Hi, Prof. Hello, Mune. Uh, Am I audible? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Hey, um, I'm Mohan, uh, Associate Head from Electrical Engineering Department. We have two of our admin staff here, Ms. Diana and Ms. Mooney, so who are uh, helping us in the uh, coursework programs, master's coursework programs. So next few minutes, I will be uh, giving, uh, I'll be talking on the MSc electrical engineering program, particularly, so I will explain about the program structure, okay, the admission uh, details, okay, what are the requirements for the degree, so what types of specializations are offered. Then finally, what are the prospects of job, or the job opportunities, so once you graduate. So, um, so if you have any doubts, so please feel free to stop me if you want a quick clarification. Otherwise, you may want to wait until the presentation is complete. Then we will have at the 15 to 20 minutes time to clarify your doubts, if any. I'll start now, let me share the screen. Okay, as I just mentioned, so I'll be talking on Master of Science in Electrical Engineering. This is basically a coursework based master's degree program offered by the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, College of Design and Engineering at the National University of Singapore. When I say coursework based program, that means there is another program which is based on the research that we call it as segment. So here, the presentation is on the coursework master's degree program. Okay, so what is this program about? Uh, basically, if you look at this program, this is a master's program. So that means this program provides you an opportunity to upgrade yourself by acquiring additional knowledge and core capabilities in various <coughs> areas of electrical engineering. Some of you might be already working. So this also would be helpful to upgrade yourself. So some of you uh, participants, okay, may be still a student. So they want to, uh, they also can join this program to upgrade your knowledge and your capabilities and skill. So if you look at, okay, the areas, I mean, as, uh, as most of you may be knowing, <clears throat> electrical engineering is a broad area which includes many uh, different tracks kind of things. See, for example, on one side, we have the electronics track with let's say microelectronics or nanoelectronics. Okay? And we also have the scope or opportunity to, to specialize our study in biomedical systems, computer systems or multimedia systems, digital communications, wireless communications, control systems, robotics, okay, opticals, materials, devices, integrated circuits, and microwaves, antennas, okay, and energy systems, okay. And so, so I mean, this doesn't include itself. This, so, so our electrical engineering program is still broader than this. They cover a large or broad range of subjects. Of course, you will have a chance to specialize in a particular focused area, which I will briefly present it slightly later. So as far as the program is concerned, we offer both full-time and part-time programs. So when we say full-time, so if you joined the programs, this would be, uh, you'll be studying full-time. That means you will not be working anywhere else. And you will be allowed to do more subjects or modules. Okay, so you will be spending your time and effort full-time for this program. As far as the part-time program is concerned, this is meant for those people who are working uh, let's say in Singapore, okay, already they have a job, they are working and they want to enhance their knowledge and skill. And so they can also pursue the master's program. As far as international applicants are concerned, that means those who are not residing in Singapore, they can only apply for full-time programs. Okay, so if you wish to apply for part-time, okay, you should have some work pass or you should be a, uh, let's say, citizen or permanent resident. Uh, otherwise, you need you can do only full time. And as I said before, our department 
okay, uh, spans a broad uh, area. There are many different uh, branches of electrical engineering, which we cover. So we have uh, skilled faculty members who are specialized in different areas. So accordingly, we, uh, we divide this into uh, seven different groups or areas, which are listed in alphabetical order, communications and networks, control intelligent systems and robotics, integrated circuits and embedded systems, microelectronic technologies and devices, microwave and radio frequency, power and energy systems, signal analysis and machine intelligence. So these are the seven key areas of specializations, okay, which our department staff, okay, so they have expertise. And accordingly, we also offer modules or subjects in all these areas. So it's up to the student. Some students, okay, are interested to study modules across different areas. Some students are interested to study in some selected focused areas, maybe one or two areas. So this is up to the student who wants to pursue their study. Okay. So if you look at the program structure, our MSc program offers lecture modules, dominantly lecture modules, and also optional project modules. So the, we also offer project modules, which is equivalent to one or two modules. So module here refers to the subject. Yeah. Each module, carries certain credits. See, for example, here, it carries four modular credits. And a student to graduate, he has to he or she has to complete 10 graduate modules within the maximum candidature period, which we look at this. What is this candidature period, etc. Okay. And the program, uh, the modules are offered during the regular semester period, let's say semester one and semester two. Semester two, one starts in August. Semester two starts in January. And the language, the medium of instruction is English. All the modules are taught in English. And they are generally held on weekdays in the evening from 6 to 9 p.m. So there's a good reason to offer in the evening because in addition to the full-time students, so we provide an opportunity for the part-time students who are already working in the companies. So they will be able to make it during the evening time, 6 to 9 p.m. Of course, the labs will be open during the daytime, so full-time students are free to go to the lab to work, okay, uh, to do some projects, etc. So resources are available throughout the day. The examinations are conducted Monday to Saturday. There will be different sessions like morning, afternoon, evening sessions. And in terms of the candidature period, so you may ask, Okay, um, what is the duration of the program? Okay, so the duration is not fixed, but the maximum duration is fixed. So if you look at the full-time study, the maximum duration is two years. That means four semesters. Okay. For part-time study, the maximum candidature period is four years. That means a full-time student <coughs> is required to complete the degree within two years. Right? Similarly, part-time students should complete the degree within four years. Why is the difference? Okay, why, how come part-time students are given more time? Because full-time students can study more modules when compared to the part-time students. So if you look at the workload in each semester, the maximum workload for a full-time student is 20 MC. Okay, because one subject or module carries four MCs, so we, they can do up to five uh, modules in a semester. That means a full-time student can complete within two semesters if he wants. Five mod subjects he can do in semester one, five modules he can do in semester two. But as far as part-time students are concerned, they can do only three modules in a semester. So that means they need at least four semesters and maximum candidature is eight semesters or four years. So this is because they are working. So they may not be able to do five modules in uh, because they cannot attend five lectures, in five evenings. So it may not be possible. So that's the reason why um, we allow only up to three modules. But when you look at the typical or normal workload, 
a part time student normally do two modules in semester full time student does an average four modules in a semester minimum of course every student has to do at least one module in a semester as far as the degree requirement is concerned a student has to complete 10 graduate modules that is equivalent to 40 modular credits within the maximum candidature period Okay. I'm not going into those details because if you get admission and join, you will know more specifics about these modules, combination of modules, etc. But right now, roughly, you can understand that we need to complete 10 modules within the candidature period. Okay. And if you have opted for specialization, which is optional, then there will be some additional requirements. That means still you will, you will do 10 modules, but out of this 10, five modules will be from a basket of modules that belongs to that particular specialization. In addition to that, you, you also meet certain performance. That means each module is okay, assessed and the student is given some grade, okay, A, B, C, et cetera. And accordingly, some grade points are given. So we are not interested to look into all these equations now, but what you need to know is that there's a minimum performance requirement to graduate. That is a cap or cumulative average grade point of 3.0. In addition to these modules, there are some E modules, which are not graded, but you need to, graded means you will not be receiving any grade like A, B or C, but you receive grades something like satisfactory or unsatisfactory. So you need to complete satisfactorily some E modules, online modules imposed by university level, okay? For example, okay, these modules could be related to, uh, uh, for example, uh, plagiarism, okay, uh, or okay, uh, uh, behavior, okay. So, so there are different types of modules in addition to the technical modules, okay. As and when required by the university, we may have to complete. Okay, specialization, okay. As I said before. We offer a broad range of subjects. There are many seven different areas, right? So you may be interested to specialize in control and robotics. Okay, you may be interested to specialize, okay, in uh, let's say some you want to study some subjects mostly related to signal processing or the machine learning AI kind of things. Okay, or you may be interested to specialize in uh, electronics field like microelectronics or nanoelectronics. Okay, so we offer three different specializations. One is automation and power engineering, then information systems, nanoelectronics. Okay. So if you look at uh, these uh, three specializations, these specializations are optional. Under each specialization, we provide a list of modules. That means if you want to specialize, you need to complete five modules from the given list. Maybe out of five, two may be compulsory, two, three may be electives. Okay? So if you don't meet the specialization requirement, but still you have completed 10 modules with cap of 3.0, et cetera, you can get the degree, but without specialization. So as I said before, specialization is optional. Coming to the admissions. So if you look at the admissions, there are two rounds of admissions in an academic year. Okay, semester one starts in August. So for August, the admission is already over. So the next round of admission is January. Okay, it's about to be over. So if you're interested, I think still the, uh, it should be open, right? Diana, you can correct me. I think still the, uh, the system is open. So one, the first round is for August semester one, the second round of admissions in for the second semester that starts in January. Okay. Then who are all eligible? Because it's a graduate program, Okay, you should have minimum bachelor's degree. This is mandatory, that is compulsory. Right? And you should have a good academic standing with some kind of harness uh, class okay, of uh, degree. Of course, the degree and classes may differ from university to university. So, but you should have a decent uh, uh, academic performance in the relevant discipline, engineering discipline, or other disciplines like computing, computer science, right, so applied maths or applied physics. Okay, so these kind of uh, uh, degrees are also recognized. Okay, 
uh, when they have a good academic standing, etc. Of course, other qualifications also uh, uh, preferred. So it all depends on the competition and other things. In addition to that, there is a link English language requirement. Okay. If applicable. Okay. So the English language requirement includes you should have minimum score IL score of 6.0 or TOEFL score of 85. So then, so, so this is mainly for those whose first language is not English or the medium of uh, instruction is not English. Okay. And we also take into consideration relevant working experience, particularly for part-time uh, students, right? Okay, so, so experience also matters. So please note that these are all minimum requirements that does not automatically guarantee any admission because admission is on competitive basis. So when we receive a large number of applications, obviously we will prioritize them, okay? And you may be interested to know about the tuition fee. So every master's program has its own tuition fee. So they may slightly different here and there, but as far as our uh, tuition fee is concerned, Okay, the teacher fee is about $50,000. Sorry, it's not about, it's, it is $50,000 for this academic year, that is academic year 2022. And this excludes the goods and services tax, GST. Currently GST is 7%, okay. And please note that the fees is charged by the program. That means for the entire program, the fees is 50,000. Whether you complete it, see for example, let's say you are a full-time student, whether you complete the program in two semesters, three semesters or four semesters, the fees, total fees will be the same, okay? Similarly, for the part-time students, whether you complete it in uh, four semesters, five, six, or seven or eight, the tuition fee would be the same, okay? They are not based on the semester or yearly basis, but they are based on the program. And the tuition fees are reviewed yearly. There could be small increase. Okay, so it depends, subject to revision. And you can always, when you are interested to apply, you can check, okay, what is the prevailing tuition fees or GST, etc. All the fees are quoted in Singapore dollar, although you see just dollar, it refers to Singapore dollar. And as I said, it's subject to GST. And there also can be a small miscellaneous fees to use the facilities, et cetera. So they may be small compared to this 50K. And this may be payable on semester basis. And for the Singapore citizens and Singapore permanent residents, some fee rebate is given. So currently the rebate is $10,000 per program. This also would be reviewed, okay, uh, every year, okay, but for the first two years, those who join in the first two years, academic year 2022 and 2023, uh, the fee rebate is 10,000 per program. That is instead of 50,000, it will be 40,000 plus GST. Okay. And this is applicable for both full-time and part-time students because for both full-time and part-time, the fees is the same. And about the career prospects or the op job opportunities, so our students have scope to find jobs in different sectors, for example, electronic sectors and the power sector, control, instrumentation, robotics, etc. ICT sector, that refers to information and communication technology, telcos, telcos part of ICT, you can call as a part of ICT. Transportation sector, even bank and finance sector, some of our students, okay, they prefer because they also study okay, modules with uh, uh, which they get different skills on, let's say data analysis, okay, AI, um, and some optimization skills, et cetera. So some of the students are joining finance sector as well. They can also join research institutes. Okay, research institutes um, is like a company, but more focused on R&D, research and development. Okay, so, so they are, generally funded by the government. These research institutes are funded by the government. Okay, and you have opportunities to work in multinational companies, okay, uh, large enterprises, medium enterprises, small enterprises, 
startup companies, etc. And if you look at our department website, so you can also see, okay, uh, some uh, examples of the companies where okay our students can find job. And note that there are several other companies which are also not listed here, okay, because in addition to this, there are other companies also, for example, Cisco, Huawei, okay. So we classify under different categories, multinational companies, telecommunications, telcos, then transportation, aerospace, and IC design, semiconductor electronics industry. So you can see a number of companies or industries are there. Then similarly, energy, oil, gas, then government agencies, financial institutions, as bank and financial institutions, R and D, that is uh, that is the research institutes which I was referring to. Uh, so there are few institutes here. Then of course there are plenty of startup companies. So some are listed here. So so these are all. Uh, the companies where the graduates uh, may find uh, opportunities to get a job. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, the end of my presentation. Okay, I think I 20 minutes. And I uh, thank everyone uh, on behalf of the management team of the graduate programs from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. So thanks everyone. So we have, we are left with another 50, 20 minutes for Q&A. So um, we expect, okay, more questions or clarifications or, or, or requests from you. So shall I stop here? Uh, now it's a time for Q&A. So please don't feel shy. Please feel free to ask questions. Uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, so uh, for the 5K mods in the, uh, in the, master level mods right is you require some uh required modular like 3k mod requirement when like like in undergraduate level so those are easy compulsory no pardon can you please repeat your question uh, sorry sorry <laughs> it's like okay so it's like uh when you take 5k mods in undergraduate level some of them require 3k mod requirements but when you take it as a uh, master uh, course, right? Do you do they care about like whether you have fulfilled the three K more requirements? Whether you fulfill what? Which uh, which which requirement? Like the three K uh module the requirement. Cause uh I cause like when I look at in NUS mod, the some of them require some three K mod the requirement. Three K modules, three thousand level modules, is it? Yes, yes, three three thousand level modules. Uh, no, our programs do not require any 3000 or 4000 level modules okay hmm. some I, I think you are referring to prerequisites if i am not wrong yes, yeah yeah so yeah the prerequisites right and uh, so if um, okay there are two possibilities okay one is out of these 10 modules i didn't go into the details okay two subjects up to two subjects you can do 4000 level modules you are free to do okay Le relevant modules okay and no um, graduate module will have a prerequisite of 3000 or 4000 level modules. Okay? But some modules may have an advisory, advisory in the sense the lecturer might say, okay, if you have already studied, okay, this type of 3000 level modules or subject topics, you will find it easy, maybe easier for you, right? Okay. So what you can do, again, it's not compulsory, it's not mandatory. But there will be an advisory because later you should not feel that, oh, the lecturer did not tell us that this kind of background knowledge is required, right? See, for example, okay, I teach a course, I find that, okay, some probability knowledge is required for this course. And if I feel that, okay, so this uh, probability topics at the level of uh, some 4,000 level course, okay, then it's, it's only a recommended one. It's not compulsory. So if you're interested, you can study yourself or you can study a separate course, okay? As I said, up to two fourth level modules you can study, but there is, it's not compulsory or mandatory, 3,000 or 4,000 level modules, no. Uh, okay, uh, another question is, uh, if I took the 5,000 module in under, when I was in year four, then 
can you count it towards the master level graduation requirement? Um, yeah, so then, okay. So this you can say, uh, discuss separately with our staff later, okay, because we want to know more details like whether it was uh, counted towards your undergraduate degree, okay, and other things. If it's not counted, uh, we can consider, okay. So you, you can um, later approach our department with more specific details. Uh, okay, then okay. So, uh, another question. Uh, for the uh five thousand level modules, uh, it is it are they uh are they uh graded based on bell curve or graded based on uh just normal grading? Uh, is bell curve used for the grading or uh depend on the what do you I understand, okay. When you say bell curve, I mean, I don't think strictly there is any bell curve or not, right? Okay. Doesn't mean that, okay, some students should always get the low grade, some students should always get the top grade, okay? Yeah. So naturally, okay, <clears throat> in the highest grade, I don't think in any subject, uh, many students are getting A grade and all naturally, okay? Naturally, students are usually spread out. But Note that it's not compulsory for us that somebody should get D, D, D grade, somebody should get C grade. There's no such compulsory requirement. Okay. Do, do you get this point? Uh, okay. Uh, so, so, okay. So, so let's say if the lowest mark is, let's say, 60 marks, for example. Mm. So, so, so that means there may not be any low end grade. I, I, okay. There may not be any D grade or See, I, I, if the lecturer oh. feels it deserves better grade, because this even the lowest grade is seventy marks, should be fine. I mean, yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. But but there will be differentiation. Okay, I don't say it's a bell cow. There will be differentiation. Okay, because we have to give credit to the good performing students. Naturally, some students are on top. Okay, some students are in the middle region. Some students are there. Yeah. So so it's more to help the better students huh, than to. Yeah. Yeah. The best student. Okay. yeah, yeah, differentiation is there, but I don't say it's a straight bell curve and all. Yes, bell curve means we should, okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so there are a few questions asked from the chat, okay. Uh, I want to know the research interests in integrated circuits, including telecommunications. Um, okay. I don't know when you say research uh, interests related to computer engineering are this. Okay, as I said before, this program, MSc program is basically a coursework based program. Okay, so you'll be studying the modules to acquire knowledge and skill. Of course, you can also do as a project part of some research based project and all, right? Um, I don't know what exactly, maybe you can unmute your mic and ask the questions. Okay, so as I said before, there are good number of modules offered in the areas of, uh, uh, let's say, integrated circuits or communications or uh, microelectronics, nanoelectronics, etc. Similarly, uh, other areas as well. Okay, but if you are interested to do pure research, okay, not the course or case program, there's a separate um, uh, briefing session, there's a separate talk on the research programs. You can attend these courses. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Can you please please uh, be louder? It's very soft your voice. Yeah. Hello, Professor Mahan. Could yes. I ask you a question? Yes. So, greetings. Uh, my name is Rahardi, and I've been working as an electrical engineer here in Indonesia. And I just want to clarify uh, several questions. And the first one is. Uh, forgive me if I missed something, but I did not see any other standardized test for the admission requirements except for IELTS or TOEFL. So I just want to make sure if the GRE test is required for the admission or not. No. That's the first question. And the second one, and I also did not see any uh, requirement for the recommendation letter. So is it also required for the admission process? Uh, yeah, well, maybe... I think that's all, Professor. Okay. For the coursework programs, we don't need GRE. Okay. 
so uh, no no need for gre and similarly reference letters are also not needed no so right. my answer is no for both for the courser program of course oh, for right. the research for the research programs like phd or masters research some reference letters are required so i mm -hmm. mean for, for this talk i think we we confined to courser based pro program for msc electrical engineering we don't need gre we don't need reference right. letters yes all right thank you professor mahan have okay. a nice day yeah welcome okay. same to you yeah how about others uh, actually i have a similar question to the one in the chat uh, is the, about the intake the the number and the like the how the difficulty of getting into this program uh, the coursework master by coursework program uh okay so if you go by the past records okay so maybe in a year close to uh, maybe 200 uh, students will join MSc electrical engineering both semester one and semester two so you can say about 200 students join yeah. so this is a typical enrollment hello is, is uh, it clear uh, so uh, it's about 200 in a year that is both put together semester one and semester two about 200 students join every year this based on the past statistics yeah. Uh, okay, so so is then the total number of applications, like is uh, around how much? Is it is it coming in to share? If it's not coming in to share, that, then like because I want to know like what is the prob uh, probability of like, getting in if I apply or something. Um, okay, there are two things. Okay, one thing I can highlight. Okay, so um, of course the competition uh, is also related to the numbers of the applications okay um but are you a new student or uh, other students uh i'm a new student okay a new student okay uh, so maybe difficult to tell okay if we receive this many applications mm -hmm. okay uh, you will have a better chance and other things mm -hmm. because sometimes okay we receive more applications in semester one generally when compared to semester two right uh but in terms of i mean the merit is more or less equal okay so i would suggest you to submit the application and see yeah right okay okay thank you yeah there is a question in the chat i wonder do you have opportunity have opportunity to apply for phd um Yes, there's a question from somebody whether they can apply for PhD. Yes, after completion of, you cannot directly move to PhD, but after completion of MSc program, you are free to uh, apply for uh, PhD. That is when you are in the final semester, you apply for PhD. So if you get admission the next semester, you can join the PhD program. Okay, so, okay, so the good thing is that when you are doing MSc program, so there is a project module, right? There's a one year project that is possible. So you can work with a professor, okay, uh, who is also interested in you, okay, in the similar field, right? So let's say you want to work in particular robotics field, right? So you just find suitable supervisor and work uh, with him for a one year project. So he also knows about your capability, you know, so both of them, if they are interested, so then, you can apply for PhD, but PhD has its own procedure, right? Okay. It's possible. And some uh, some of the subjects or modules you studied, if you have good grades, you can transfer it to PhD. Okay, that is possible. Good morning, Prop. Yes. Yes, my Yes, sir. Um, should I say morning? Uh, because I'm, 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 I'm here from uh, Africa, Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, so it's last morning or afternoon. Um, uh, the question I want to ask is have been clear about uh, GRE. So I want to ask for African students like Nigeria, do I need uh, uh, IELTS or TOEFL to come for, for the application? IELTS or TOEFL should be okay. Yes. No, okay. Need for, no, need, no need for GRE. 
So for Nigerian, we have an English as the spoken uh, as the uh, language. So this, I still need it. So the app before the admission, or I can just use a um like a English from from my because I've uh, used English during my undergraduate. Uh, I think you may still need it. Okay, mm. maybe if you want more specific information, you can separately email. Okay, uh, mm. uh, to us to know this because I don't know whether Nigeria all schools have English media instructions or only some schools have uh, English as media form instructions, right? Okay, uh, because uh, Diana, yes, yeah, Prafon, yeah. So for those from Nigeria, yes, IELTS or TOEFL score will be required. Yes, Mohammed, is it clear? We need, yes, sir. we need either one of them, yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you, Prof. Okay, so anyone else? So there's a student from uh, Myanmar, two years working experience in industries. Can I study about power system automation in the program? Yes, uh, our inter students. Uh, yes, as far as, okay. Um, so from Myanmar, you studied from Myanmar, yes. Okay, you can study power system and automation in the program. Yeah, so student visa uh, for inter students, there's no issue. Okay, we don't see any issue here, yeah. Because once we offer admission, normally there should not be any problem with student visa. Even during the COVID period, there were some restrictions, but students in that case were doing remotely. But now things are doing better. So I, I don't see any issue in getting visa if you get admission. Is it clear? Yes, sir. I'm clear. Thank you for answering, sir. Okay. Hello, sir. Can yes. I ask you one more question? Is sure. there uh, any opportunity to get scholar about this program? What do you mean by day scholar? Yeah, I mean, uh, is uh, opportunity to get scholar for this embassy program? <coughs> Sorry. Oh, scholarship, is it? You yes, mean this scholarship. Program? Yes, scholarship. Yeah. You are from Singapore or from other country? Hello. I am from Myanmar. You are from Myanmar, huh? okay. Yes. Um, I don't think our university gives any scholarship, okay. And uh, uh, Diana, do you have any information whether? Uh, currently, no. There is no scholarship for yeah. uh, MSc program. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so in my country, uh, we also have uh, like grading and transcript document so uh we we are not finding the module and must so is that a chance to take back in this program uh, i mean uh, uh, yeah it's okay i think you're asking whether you can transfer some modules yeah. from myanmar university to this right uh, uh no we cannot transfer the modules because you need to do uh, 10 modules from our program. Yeah. We don't do module transfer or create transfer from other universities like Myanmar. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. This is to make sure that everything is uniform because students come from different countries. Maybe similar subjects they might have studied, but the depth and breadth of study may not be the same. So very difficult to assess. So to be consistent and for uniformity so we don't uh, transfer the credits or modules from other universities particularly from other countries so is there a chance to get your email to contact or ece department um yes i think our if you go to our website some details should be there yeah you can contact us no problem so you are free to visit our website and you must be able to get more information uh, about the department or the kind of subjects we offer, etc. Yes, yes, sir. So you can see in the chat, uh, Ms. Diana has sent the web, web link. So you can refer this and you can use this. Go and uh, get more details. And there is a question from a participant, Yo Kang Myung. 
for the cost of the program, you mentioned that it is 50K. For the part-time program, does it mean it takes over a span of two years, three years, or four years, still cost is the same? Yes, the cost is the same, 50K only. Whether it is part-time or full-time, $50,000 is the same. Because in terms of number of modules, whether it's a part-time or full-time, both will be doing 10 subjects or modules. Um, because part-time is doing for four years, the reason is that okay, they cannot do more than three modules, subjects for, per semester. So yeah. that's why, yeah. Oh, yeah, hi, Prof. Yeah, so I asked the question. So I'm curious, right? If, let's say we take more than 10 modules, would it cost more? Um, we don't... Um, yeah, this is this fees is only for ten modules. Yeah, because if you want to do uh, more modules, then uh, you need to check with us whether okay subject availability and other things. We may be charged extra. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Diana, the January uh, application portal is still open, right, Diana? Um, for January, it will be open on twenty fifth July. Okay. It has been, they just been announced, I think, recently. Yeah. I'll type the link here. So if you're interested to apply for January 2023 intake, you still have time, uh, uh, three weeks, at least three weeks time. So you are free to apply. For August intake, the admission is already over. For January 2023, so the application portal will be open from 25th July to 31st August, as you see in the chat by Ms. Dana. Um, okay, participants. Um, thanks everyone to join this session. So we'll be happy to clarify your questions or doubts any. So you can join. So tomorrow there is a session on MSc uh, Computer Engineering. I'm going to give a similar talk tomorrow. So if you're interested to explore MSc Computer Engineering as well, Please feel free to join. Uh, thanks, everyone. Any other questions? So if no more questions, so we will close this session or we can leave the session. OK, thanks, uh, Diana, Mune. So OK, thanks, we'll, Prof. Yeah, yeah, see you again tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. OK. Thanks, everyone.